Hey, y'all. This is your girl, Sonia, and welcome back to She Say, She Say Sports. Today, I'm speaking with my producer, Mike Prince of Open Mic Broadcast, and we will be discussing the NFL reinstating Cleveland Browns' Miles Garrett. Mike, how you doing today? I'm doing great, Sonia. How you doing, Mama? I am doing well. It's been a long time since we've done a show together. It's been a long time. Oh. <laughs> long time coming, but I know, you know a okay. show is going to be. <laughs> okay, you changed the words up. Remix. I always do a remix. I always do. <laughs> What's going yeah, on? What's you, good? You threw me out the nest about six to eight months ago, and I've been on my own ever since. So, you know, hey, I'm just trying to. Trying to talk a, talk a little bit with my producer, you know, just a little bit. <laughs> Time's up. Time, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, I've missed that verbal banter. It's but all good. It's all good. So as I mentioned earlier, the NFL reinstated Miles Garrett. And just to give a little refresher, Miles Garrett and Rudolph Mason, quarterback for the Steelers, got into a scuffle on the field after a play last season. During that scuffle, Mason was screaming in Garrett's face while trying to take his helmet off. When Garrett finally got up, he finished taking the helmet off and swung from Mason's head, which is why he was suspended indefinitely. In my opinion, this was an assault with a deadly weapon. I thought he should have been suspended. However, I assumed the suspension would be until the beginning of the season coming up. So, Mike, my question to you is, do you think the suspension and fines were enough for Miles Garrett? You know what? You could take it either way. I'm saying it was a it was a dumb dumb moment on both sides, Absolutely. and people were like people saying, "Well, man, he that was an assault, and he should have filed charges, and probably, but it is what it is. It's done and over with." And I, being a big Pittsburgh still a fan, I'm saying, "Okay, let the dust settle. Enough is enough, and you move forward." Um, right. There was uh, allegedly uh, some racial slurs that were said, we may never know the true crux of the matter. All we can base things on is what we saw. And what we saw was Garrett swing the helmet at his head. He didn't hit his head. And it was a lot of what could have happened, what should have happened. He was suspended for six games. The Browns end up being who we thought they were. Uh, As far as I'm concerned, you wipe the slate, move forward, and continue back on the course of football. Absolutely. And, you know, I didn't discuss this um, last season when this first happened. So, you know, my questions may seem, you know, you know, like, you know, why, okay, we already know this, but since Mason started the fight and initially was trying to take his helmet off, was his suspension and fines, were they enough? I'm thinking, once again, it, it was enough according to what was seen. Okay. We don't know what was seen. That makes sense. Right. But what was seen as a result, it's just like in any uh, game of football, uh, you get the personal penalty charge against you, but all they see is the guy who retaliated to the guy who may initiate the actual action, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. And yeah, this, it was, is. this was that case in point with Mason Rudolph and Miles Garrett. And one of my faithful followers of She Say, She Say Sports, William Ambrose, he brought up the incident with Vontae Burfick hit on A.B., I understand that he could have broken his neck. I don't think you can compare the two, although very dangerous. That was during a play, and it was part of the risk that players take in a game of football. You know, Garrett actually swung it to his head, which could have cracked his skull. And like you say, it's could have, should have, would have. You know, we don't know. He swung at his head. It, it didn't actually hit it, but I would have preferred just like a good old-fashioned fight with hands, you know, in order to get the rage from both of them out of the way instead of, you know, dealing with helmets and heads and stuff like that. Well, let me let me play devil's advocate if I could. Now, mind okay. you, I'm a Steelers fan. If you go back and look at that footage between Mason and Miles Garrett, Miles mm-hmm. really could have been bluffing when he swung the helmet because it wasn't like Mason ducked out the way and as close as he was, don't you think a guy, if he really wanted to hit him, could have hit him? Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was it, it was close proximity. True. You know, I'm an arm's length away. I got the help. If I really want to hit you on the top of your head, guess what? You'd have been hit on the top of your head. Right. You know, so yeah. 
and once again, it was poor judgment on both parties. I Absolutely. think the, the best thing you can do is hope that they both learn from this incident. You got to realize, Miles Garrett missed six games, six games without pay. Right. And those NFL checks that come on Tuesday are huge. <laughs> and no matter they are huge, who, yeah. Yeah, no matter <laughs> whose budget you're on, no one can afford to be missing six paychecks regardless of what your job profession is. Absolutely. That's true. That is true. So how do, how do you think we can avoid situ- situations like this in the future with any player? I mean, should they put some type – I mean, I'm sure they have some type of rule regarding something like this already in order, or do you – what do you think? Well, what you do is you got to put it back into the authorities on the field, and that's the officials. Now, mm-hmm. being a former player, there's always some exchange of pleasantries, in particular in a football game. And so as an official on the field hearing all this, you start giving out warnings. All right, guys, let's keep it on the game, keep the, the chippiness away. And if you have to go to the sidelines and say, look, coaches, get control of your players, we're warning, next time we're going to start penalizing and possibly ejecting players because there's a such thing as warning before destruction. Then this, 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 okay. this incident did not just pop off for one play. It was building right. up all night. It was building was, up, absolutely. Right. There was frustration. Steelers were expected to win that game on that Thursday night. It was a rival game. Mason had been on his back and running for his life all night. Miles Garrett feeling good. They got to popping off, talking noise with each other, and it got out of control. It didn't just happen on one play. Right. And and that's, you know, un- unless you were actually watching the game, you're right. It was it was building up, and that was just like the last straw, I guess. So you're, you're absolutely right. So it was, it was pretty chippy during that game, and I'm glad that he's back in the game because I, I like him. I, you know, I did not like what he did. You know, that was a little nerve-wracking for me. Some people may disagree, and that's fine. Absolutely. There was an old football player used to play for uh, the San Francisco 49ers when the answer didn't happen, but he was somewhat of a journeyman. He played with the Broncos and a couple other teams I can't quite recall off the top of my head. But Bill mm-hmm. Romanowski spit in a guy's face and, and used a racial slur. Oh, my. And for me... This might sound unorthodox or just straight up. I'd rather you swing a helmet at me than to spit on me. You know what? Now, you got a point. Now, that and slapping somebody in their face is like the most disrespectful thing ever to me. You could slap me in the face, baby girl, but don't spit on me. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Ain't enough walls in, in, in any location to contain the wrath that could come from that. Don't spit on me. You can talk yes. about me, talk about my mama, talk about my dog, but don't spit on me. Please don't. I, I, now, I agree with that. That is, whew, that's like just the utmost disrespect. Period. That's nasty. That's nasty that's, with all capital letters. Yes, absolutely. I totally agree. So, did, I mean, and I don't, I mean, did he... Did anything happen to him when he did that? I think, and this was like early 90s, late 80s when it happened. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 maybe, I know a fine happened, but I'm trying to recall, and I might have to research it, was he actually suspended for any games? I know he wasn't suspended for no more than two or three games. I know that. But mm-hmm. that's an assault. You know, ain't no telling what you walking around with and you spitting on somebody. That's nasty. That's true. That's very nasty. It's very nasty. Absolutely. Well, I am so glad that you finally, I had to drag you on here today. However, right. Right. yes, um, I've been trying. Okay, now I've talked. No, I haven't talked to them about this on my show, I don't believe. Mike, because he's up um, like at 12 at night until like 3 or 4, He's, you know, he's producing, he's editing, he's doing shows, his own show. Like I said, he has open mic broadcast, so he's doing his own shows, editing other people's shows. He's he's ready to go to sleep, like, I'm talking about nighttime sleep at 4.30. <laughs> so I have been trying to interview with him for like three days now, 
And when I call him, he's asleep. I'm like, oh, my gosh, Mike, really? You knew I was calling. I can't help it. It's the phone. If I don't hear it, I don't hear it. So it's like <laughs> I had to – this is like 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock this morning that I had to do this show with him because he'll be asleep at 4, knocked out. Yeah. And I get text. No, sir, it's not a problem. And <laughs> me and the team, BJ, Carlos, like when a tournament or a bowl is going on and we got stuff to do, we're going to get text messages from Mike at 2, 3, 1, 4 o'clock in the morning, and I just turn my ringer off because, you know, he's a mad scientist at that time. That's his time. You know, that's that's what he do. So you have so, written to the people that you ignored me. <laughs> oh, no, I, like you said, the phone will go off, but I be asleep. <laughs> so your 4 o'clock is my 2 o'clock. <laughs> in the morning, Amen. and I'm knocked out. So yeah, I I get my sleep. I get my sleep just like you get yours. So, we so just I had get them to in different sectors. We get them in different, different sectors. Absolutely, absolutely. So thank you so much for finally joining me today, and get and let the people know how they can how they can follow you. Well, you can follow the network as a whole at the Open Mic Broadcast Network on YouTube. Uh, obnradio.com on a, a World Wide Web on the social media handles for Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at the Mike Prince Show. It's all one word running together. And I'm just a busy little beaver. We're on Tuned In Radio as a network. We're on iHeart Radio as a network. Spotify, uh, just about any other platform you can think of, we're broad sp- spread. Which is why we're thankful to not only of the listeners, but to shows like yours, BJ's, Carlos, and the whole nine yards with our local and regional high school and collegiate coverage. And it's just a labor of love, and I can't do it without any of you guys. Thank you so much, and we can't do it without you, period. So we're thankful that um, you allowed us to be a part of the Open Mic Broadcast family, and it's just been a blessing for me. I love it. So uh, we'll be seeing you. I'll be seeing you what, in about a month from now in Perhaps. Birmingham. Perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> Whatever. For, you I'll gotta, see you. You got to let my family loose, though. Since I came on the show, you can release them from being in ransom now. <laughs> being in <laughs> and being in what? In ransom. You had my family. <laughs> ransom. Can you release no. my wife? Son? I miss my. I wife. love can Stephanie. I, I would never hold her hostage, period. No. <laughs> okay, is, okay. That's what you told me. Say, if you don't come on the show, she's going to still be missing. So, no, I now, know, can my wife no, those come kids. home? Now? Yeah, okay, fine. She can come <laughs> home. Now, them kids, <laughs> I'll release them after the show is released. <laughs> so, that's the exchange. All right, dear. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. I appreciate you, mama. Well, thank you so much, and you can reach me on Facebook, She Say She Say Sports, Instagram, She Say She Say Sports 23. Let's talk about it. Let's have dialogue, and I do respond. You know, let's have fun. Let's talk sports. But until then, this is Sonia with She Say She Say Sports, and I'll see you on the radio.